Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be doing Zoologist Nightingale. This is a fragrance a couple of viewers wanted me to go over. I personally wanted to go over in my whole Zoologist sample set. This was in my top three fragrances I was most interested, most intrigued to try. The perfumer is uh, Tumu Inaba. So, and they, they use a Japanese perfumer to do um, what would be considered a classical Japanese fragrance. Now, I've never smelled a classical Japanese fragrance before, so I'm not speaking from an expert opinion, but from what I've gathered in the notes in here, I, I, I think it really is, y y to me, it feels authentic. Um, so in the traditional, traditional zoologist fashion, you know, with their kind of steampunk aesthetic, we have our geisha nightingale here. I think it's a really good one. I think that's one of the best of the zoologist portraits. Um, but I'll go ahead and read the top notes for you. Bergamot, lemon, saffron, heart notes, Japanese plum blossom, red rose, violet, base notes, Ambergris, frankincense, labdanum, moss, oud, patchouli, sandalwood, white musk. So a whole lot in the base. Um, and this is a basey fragrance, but it's also uh, very sharp at the top. So what's really interesting and what's going to make this a bit of a challenging review is that I had two wares of this and I kind of had two different... Um, it, it was different. Like both wares were like noticeably, very noticeably different on my skin. Um, and just in the same area on my arm. And it was really, it's actually kind of fascinating. It's kind of blowing my mind. So I'm gonna try and just talk about my experiences with both. Um, overall, I like this fragrance a lot. This is probably, I, I'm gonna guess this is the most feminine of the zoologist line. Um, I'm not squeamish when it comes to uh, kind of unisex feminine fragrances. I own a full bottle of Hummingbird. So I, I'm not squeamish about that, um, but this is, Definitely very feminine leading. Um, I mean, there's no doubt about it. However, it's very good. I think it's a beautiful composition. I, I actually really like it a lot. It's just a little too feminine for me to wear and for me to pull off. Um, at the top, um, very sharp citrus at the top, like tart, sharp citrus. Um, and I guess that could have been the, the plum blossom and other things in there, but it really, I mean, it was tart. Um, not like unbearably tart, but as far as fragrances go, I've never experienced something that tart before in a fragrance. Um, but I guess it's that sharpness and maybe it's that vintage kind of classical sharpness. Um, I'm not the expert perfumer, but maybe that's what was, they were going after. Um, it dries down, thankfully, at least in my opinion, I don't know how other people, you know, if they want it to stay, but you know, in my opinion, it was thankful that it, it calmed down. And that's when the other florals came out. Um, and you got that plum blossom, the red rose violet. Uh, it's kind of like, so when you look at the notes, you kind of think, oh, is this like a rose oud? Um, it's not, in my opinion, it's not. It goes in a different direction. Yeah, they're in there, but that's not what it's about. I don't think this is like a rose oud fragrance. They just, they, they happen to be in there, but that's not what this is all about. Um, I, I, I really like the plum blossom in here. I think it kind of gives it a booziness. There is kind of this, um, it's making my mouth water actually. Um, my mouth waters for a lot of fragrances, but this one especially. Um, it has this um, sparkly, fizzy booziness that comes out. And I think like the plum, the uh, plum blossom, it's almost like a plum wine. And I do kind of get like a wine note in here. Um, so there is, uh, a, a booziness, maybe not everyone would pick that up and maybe not everyone would draw that conclusion from it, but to me, there is something boozy about this fragrance and that's something um, that I like because, it, I, I, you know, I don't know if this is all Victor's master plan, but, um, you know, with the geisha, they were, you know, entertainers. They would serve wine, they would serve drinks, they would sing, they would dance, they'd play instruments. So um, this could perhaps be a scene where a geisha is and you have that booziness of the plum wine and things going on, and you have that traditional perfume they would wear that's very loud, projects. By the way, um, this is a strong projector. As far as zoologists go, this is an extrait, um, and this is a strong projector. I mean, just a couple, like two little sample sprays, and if you've used the sample spritzer, by the way, look at that pink juice, very nice. Um, if you use the sample spritzer, you know they're just a little So two of those, and I was like catching it off my arm, very strong. Um, which is good because I think that's all, you know, in the character and the thematic of this fragrance. Um, as this comes down, I, I pick up that ambergris and to me, ambergris kind of, 
it, it's, it kind of smells like something different to everyone, but to me it kind of smells like um, kind of a saline marine kind of wind airiness. Not heavy marine, but just kind of this airy, gusty-ish marineness, if that makes sense. Um, you get the... Interesting that labdanum is a base note, because, um, you know, typically the floral kind of stuff is at the top, but... I, I experienced that in um, Russian tea where the florals were kind of at the bottom. So that was interesting, and I think that's cool. Uh, you, you get the oud, it's not skanky. It's not skanky. The oud is not skanky. So it's very approachable, a very friendly oud. Um, you get the classic, of course. Of course, obligatory zoologist muskiness um, in the base. You get it with all of them. You know, it's just something we all have to come to accept, and I, I like it. And it really keeps the fragrance and character because I think this is kind of a, a sexier, sed, more seductive. Um, I hate using that word, seductive. But I mean, this, this, this was kind of the thematic intent of this uh, for a seductive woman. Um, uh, so it is kind. It, it is sexy, um, especially on a female, uh, on a guy. Um, you know, I, I don't know if it would come off that way. So that's why I'm, you know, everything is unisex and everything can be androgynous if you want it to. Um, but this is, this is probably too feminine for me, but I really like it. I really respect it. I think it's a good fragrance just because it's not for me. Um, I would absolutely recommend this to zoologist fans, but it's, you know, it's in my collection. I, you know, I, there's other zoologists that I would go with um, when it came down to that. But I think it's really interesting. I think the florals, the Japanese, the native Japanese uh, floral fauna kind of thing going on is really cool because I've never smelled something like that before. Um, I think it's really fascinating. Um, you could wear this, you could wear this all year because it's strong enough to hold its own in the fall and the winter when the cold kind of suppresses it. But it's also floral and airy enough where in the spring and the summer, this would do awesome. Um, this is a year rounder. Um, and it's really beautiful. I get the moss. So on my second wearing, I got, uh, I'm just going to kind of jump between wearings. Um, the, the moss, I got it a lot in the second wearing. And it is, it, it's strange how that happened. Um, you know, I've never had a fragrance change that much between two wearings. Um, and I, I, I don't know, maybe... I don't, I don't really know what to make of that, honestly. I don't really have words to describe that, but um, I think it's cool, and I kind of, I, I like that it kind of has that chameleon aspect to it. I, I think it's neat. Um, and both, both wares are great. They're just a little different. The first one was more citrusy. The second one had more of a mossiness base note. So the first wear was more at the top. The second was um, down low. I like the, 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 I like how it goes from the top to the bottom. I, I enjoy that. I think more rather than starting at the base, I like that progression um, because I think the heart notes, the Japanese plum blossom, red rose, and violet, I think the heart is the best part for me. The plum blossom is awesome. I think that plum whiny booziness aspect is awesome. I've never had that before in a fragrance. I've never smelled that before. I haven't been to Japan. Don't know when I'll go. Um, so that was really cool, kind of transportive. Um, but it's, uh, you know, it's, it has this kind of vintage feel, but it's also modern, you know, like every, like a lot of zoologists, I, I, you know, there's a lot of zoologists that kind of draw on aspects of the past, but they, um, you know, but they have this modern feel and they have this modern direction that I think is really interesting. Um, as far as Hummingbird versus Nightingale, I'll have to do a video on that, but I think that Nightingale is for the more mature woman. I think Hummingbird is kind of for the younger, um, but of course they could go either way. It doesn't, really matter. It's up to you. I have a full bottle of Hummingbird and I'm a dude. So it's, you know, I think it's awesome. I think this is awesome. Um, but I probably can't have both. So I'm, I'm happy with the Hummingbird I've got, but this is still great. Um, I'm definitely going to hang on to this sample and I'll, I'll, I'll get two wares out of this um, eventually at some point when, you know, I think it would be appropriate because I'm sure I can find a time in a place where this would be totally appropriate on me because it is beautiful. Um, it is sexy. I think it just has to be something a little more uh, flamboyant of, a, of an occasion for me. Um, like going out salsa dancing, whatever. You know, I, I like that Latin dancing stuff. Anyway, that's for another time though. Um, anyways, very enjoyable fragrance. Glad I sampled it. I, I still think this is a very interesting zoologist fragrance. Um, you know, it's one not a lot of people talk about. I feel as much um, 
but it's it's beautiful. Um, it deserves more talk and it deserves more praise in my opinion. Uh, that's all for today, folks. Thank you.